Um, so we get to the stadium last night. So fun. Fans, fans were actually pretty okay. Pretty like well mannered. I didn't see that much. We did. We found these two um, women from Philadelphia celebrating a birthday. We upgraded their seats. It was so fun. And we did it on the big screen. The Eagles super welcoming and amazing. Let us do the show here this morning in the VIP lounge. So that's great. And I get to you know finally we get some seats. So I, we, I don't know if we like traded seats with them or we just had some club seats. And so we 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 walk in and we go. It's me and Haley and we go and we sit down. And there is a man, a big man. And it's on my Instagram story. Go check it out. And he is like fully asleep. I'm not kidding. Fully <laughs> just passed out with his row of buddies. Like they've been drinking since five. Like they got to the lot at 530 in the morning. They took the day off work. They took a long weekend. They're so unbelievable and so, so fun. So I had to like wake this dude up and say, if you throw up on me, I'm hurling you into the offensive line, like into the D line. Um, but we got it done. What kind of stood out from you? I know that your hammer time yesterday talked a lot about what this um, team is going to be able to. These teams are going to be able to do. What do you got? Yeah, and and we saw the Vikings' passing attack look explosive, but once again, it was it was the turnovers uh, that stood out, and that was my biggest concern. Is uh, you know, while we saw the explosive plays in Week One from the Vikings' offense, we saw a lot of sloppiness, a lot of turnovers. Both of those things continued. Uh, big game from Jefferson, big game from Hawkinson, but not enough to get the win because the Eagles made more plays on the other side. Um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the huge numbers from Hertz that, you know, I think people were, were expecting to see in this game against that defense, but that Eagles run game is, is really, really impressive. The offensive line really went to work last night and big win for the Eagles to get to 2-0. It's super interesting that, you know, it's so star-studded on both sides, and it is DeAndre Swift that was the star of the show. And I can't wait, and I'm sure you can't either. We got Deshaun Jackson on the program. He's the perfect person to talk to about um, even just Justin Jefferson on the one side, of course, what happened on the one-yard line. That's something Deshaun Jackson, unfortunately, knows well and has been a part of a lot of receivers, a lot of weapons have. Um, and he's going to be here to sort of break down that side of what the Vikings can do from here. There's so much star-studded talent on that offense. But then, you know, with the A.J. Brown thing on the sideline, which, you know, I— by that yeah. time, I was like, oh, you know, yeah, I don't know what's going on. But but it's it's a thing and how you manage that and what it looked like. And he had Sirianni and Jalen Hurts, and he obviously wanted the ball a little more. Is is it, are we overblowing it? Should it be discussed? How do you manage that? I can't wait to talk to him. But Hammer, you, uh, you set me up perfectly because you're a, an amazing partner and you know that I want to talk about DeAndre Swift. He was the star, okay? He had one carry in the season opener, okay? But with Kenneth Gainwell out last night, this dude, the newbie, just went to work. If you take a look here, he sliced the Vikings defense. And it wasn't once or twice or big. It was play after play after play. And there was a lot of Eagles first down. So no offense to Kenneth Gainwell at all. But I feel like this is, you know, what we kind of hope to see when the Eagles, Eagles swung Bill the Eagles. Uh, and made the draft night trade. We loved it, right? He's had 175 yards on the ground. That's a career high. 6.3 yards per carry is nothing to sneeze at. It's incredible. And it's all the same with Lane Johnson and these the OGs that are holding it together, like this offensive line, one of the best in the game. And they ran it 48 times. A thing of beauty on a perfect night in Philadelphia under the bright lights of Thursday Night Football on Amazon Prime. 259 yards, three touchdowns. And I feel like, sure, like a run-heavy approach did potentially cause a, a little brouhaha, a little uh, drama or some feelings hurt elsewhere with A.J. Brown. But it was a nice win. And I feel like they needed it because, and it didn't start perfectly either, but, you know, a, a sloppy conditioned but sloppy week one in general um, out of this offense. So... Um, after it carried over into the first quarter, it sort of went away, and you love to see it. They are 2-0. and oh. There's nothing to really be worried about about this team as they try to slice and dice their way, a la DeAndre Swift, to the Super Bowl and the NFC. All right, they lost four fumbles on the night. That's sort of weird, right? So let's get into that because the Vikings um, is, is sort of the other takeaway on this. And this is truly the most tortured fan base of all time. I'm talking any sport. I'm talking any anything. They always somehow mess it up. And, I mean, if, if, if this one doesn't happen, you're looking at the whole game doesn't get completely flipped, right? They had a 14-10 lead at half. Instead, they go into the locker room down 13-7. 10-point swing in a game, guys. They lost by six points. That's crazy. And it all comes after, you know, a week one loss that sort of fell down and happened the same way, which is crazy. So before reporters could even ask him anything, guys, Coach Kevin O'Connell, he came out and he addressed the turnover issue. Take a look. Just across the board, um, you know, very much similar to 
uh, last week, which uh, turning the football over, coming to this place, uh, NFC champions from a year ago at their place in their home opener, and you lose a turnover battle four to one with three of them being t f uh, fumbles, uh, or all four of them being fumbles. Um, seven to one in turnovers lost in, in two games, and we've lost by a combined nine points to two uh, playoff teams from a year ago. Mm, I'd like to put this in perspective for a minute here. Hamilton whipped up this full screen. Take a look at this. The Vikings guys lost six fumbles through two weeks. And, you know, uh, that's the most we've seen if you're looking at the, This is a crazy full screen, you guys. That's the most we've seen in the last 20 years. They're not just coughing up the ball. They're doing it historically. And by the way, none of the other teams on this list were able to rally back and even make the playoffs. So I said it yesterday. I'll say it again. With this NFC North, the way that the Lions looked in week one, the way Jordan Love and these Packers looked in week one, falling to 0-2 is a really serious problem. Like, historically bad turnovers, okay? Six lost through two weeks, the most we've seen in the last 20 years. Those teams do not pull it together and make the playoffs. So I, I do want to say it hasn't all been bad. So sure, turnovers have been an issue, and the, but the passing game does look really nice, right? Almost unstoppable, if not for their own failures. Cousin went off for 364 yards and four touchdowns, kind of like what our boy Matt Hamilton was saying. And they did something really special with the passing attack. I mean, I don't know if it's going to mean anything down the stretch or in the long haul if they are just, you know, losing games and fumbling and turning it over. Um, but I'd rather have turnover issues and look as explosive as they look in this league, at least early, um, than not be able to move the ball at all because you can fix turnovers and hopefully they can like, buck the trend and figure it out. Um, okay, it's 11-11 here exactly on the East Coast, so everybody make a wish. My wish is for Daniel Jones to give me a movie to watch. And I want to say this. With interviewing Daniel Jones, and he couldn't do it on Tuesday Live, which is what we wanted him to do, and there was a bit of a scheduling issue, like, he came on the show, and uh, we did an interview with him yesterday right when I got to Philly. So I got my Wawa, I got my Diet Dr. Pepper, I got a bag of Cool Ranch Doritos. I ran into my hotel room, which wasn't even ready, basically. Like, it was ready the second I got there, ran upstairs, turned the Zoom on, and Daniel Jones sat down with me. And I give him a lot of credit, because he's having to face the music on a 40-zip situation. Well, it's already Thursday night, and he wants to look forward to his bout with Arizona. They're not thinking about the past. They've been preparing all week. So I got this vibe out of him of resiliency, I got, um, I don't know, just like a, 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 a very focused quarterback who also is giving me that early career Eli thing where he is not going to take the bait from me. He is not going to put it on anybody else. And I think Dable has a lot to do with that as well. Are we going to take a break or should we just roll to that interview now, guys? What do we think as I'm looking at the comments? Okay. So we're going to actually take a break right here. The Vikings need a running back so bad, Ernie says. Tyler says, I can't imagine losing a significant chunk of your O-line to injuries. Um, yeah, that's that's not funny. That's not good at all. Um, makeshift O-line. I know, but they're like rebuilding, retooling on the fly. I don't know what to make of them. I do think the more, I mean, this is Kirk Cousins last year as a Viking, in my opinion. And on that mic drop moment, I am going to send it to break. And when we get back, I'm going to show you guys um, my chat with Daniel Jones right after. So keep it. Hey, thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest Up and Adams content right on YouTube.